Hi everyone, this vlog is part of the assignment of the executive course on Islam and Religious Pluralism in Indonesia, which was organized by the Center for Education and Training, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, in collaboration with the Indonesian Consortium for Religious Studies, Yogyakarta. This vlog is based on my paper on the future of Islam, the decline in Islamic conservative groups that I submitted to the ICRS. For the past few years, many observers argued that Islam in Indonesia will become more conservative and will become more dominant in the future. And of course, I do not agree with these arguments. I'm quite optimistic about the future of Islam in Indonesia. In my conviction, the moderate Islam will always prevail in the country. You may remember the Jakarta election in 2017. The election has encouraged many observers to argue that the conservative will on the rise. At the time, the last number of people joined the entire AHO demonstration. The Islamic conservative groups reminded the arrest of Aho. The groups accused Aho of committing blasphemy. The conservative then filed the case to the police. Their efforts at the time were glorified through internet and social media. The battle ended when Aho went to jail. He was found guilty of blasphemy shortly after losing the Jakarta election. The ability of the conservative groups to mobilize people for demonstration and the ability to influence the vote of the election bring some observers into an agreement, saying that the rise of conservative had threatened the existing moderate Islamic organization. According to many observers, the conservative had the capacity to become the mainstream Islam in Indonesia replacing the moderate Islamic groups. After the Jakarta election, the pluralist group, which consists of the political parties and the Islamic moderate groups, had fought against the threat of the Islamic conservative groups. The pluralist group, including ethno supported the government policy against the radical and intolerant organization. The government decision to ban his butari in Indonesia in 2017 and FBI in 2020 has been welcomed by the pluralist group and the people. The government policy against the radical and intolerance group is not without critique. Some observers argue that despite the rise of Islamic conservative has been successfully contained, but the democratic quality of the country has been damaged. As the government policy has been perceived to defend Pancasila, many activists of pluralism and democracy and the Indonesian society at large seem to welcome or tacitly support the policy of the government. Generally, they do not want to be disturbed by the notorious activities of the hardliner group in the street and social media. As I mentioned earlier, some observers predicted that Islamic conservative group will replace the position of NO and Muhammadiyah as the mainstream Islam in Indonesia. That prediction will likely fail as the rise of the Islamic conservative group had reached the peak during the Jakarta election. I argue here that the conservative have experienced the decline ever since. The never-ending tension between the state and the political Islam as well as between the Islamic moderate group and the Islamic conservative group is expected to always save the dynamic of the Indonesian polity in the future. The contestation among the Islamic groups in Indonesia is expected to be won by the moderate group. It is because the intrinsic values of the Indonesian nation always respect pluralism and diversity. And O Muhammadiyah and other moderate Islamic groups will continue to maintain the moderate character of the Indonesian Islam. This is the reason why I am still optimistic about the future character of Islam in Indonesia.